As we uh, announced last night, uh, Maryland State Public Health Laboratory confirmed the first positive cases of the coronavirus in Maryland. A married couple in their 70s and a woman in her 50s. After notifying the patients and the CDC of these positive tests and notifying all federal, state, and local officials, I declared a state of emergency in Maryland to further mobilize all available state resources. We also immediately launched a full and exhaustive investigation to determine all of the recent public interactions of these individuals. We have some additional information to provide this evening regarding these three cases. All three of these individuals contracted the virus on the MS Asara, an Egyptian cruise on the Nile River. I want to make clear that this is a different cruise ship than the one currently off the coast of California that the Vice President just discussed a few moments ago. However, this does appear to be the same cruise ship that the World Health Organization announced today has 12 workers who have been placed in quarantine for 14 days, and our three uh, Maryland cases also appear to be linked to six confirmed coronavirus cases in Texas. During the course of our investigation of the three individuals in Maryland who tested positive, we have been able to determine that there are at least two instances of public interaction which are concerning and that we believe necessitate public notification. First, after returning from this cruise February 20th, one of the individuals attended an event in the Philadelphia area where they were in contact with a group of children and staff from a local school district. Immediately after learning this, Maryland health officials notified uh, health officials in Pennsylvania. I can confirm that as a result of that notification and out of an abundance of caution, the Central Bucks County School District in the Philadelphia suburbs made the decision to close five, five local schools today. Second, it was also determined during the health department's investigation that one of the other Maryland patients who tested positive for coronavirus attended a public event on February 29th at the village at Rockville, a retirement community where they were in contact with approximately 70 to 100 individuals, including uh, outside visitors as well as residents and staff. Uh, due to the scale of that gathering, uh, we are urging anyone who attended an event last Saturday, February 29th, at the village at Rockville between noon and 6 p.m. to immediately contact your health care provider or contact the Maryland Emergency Management Agency call center at 410-517-3720. In addition, uh, if anyone who recently visited the village at Rockville is experiencing any symptoms of a uh, respiratory infection, whether they attended the gathering or not, uh, as we would normally recommend, you should also contact their doctor. The Maryland Department of Health is in close contact with and is working in collaboration with this facility and will continue to work closely with them throughout the investigation. We are providing these updates not to unnecessarily raise uh, alarm, but in the interest of full transparency and out of an abundance of caution. We are committed to doing everything in our power uh, to contain this virus and to uh, limit its spread in our state. This is exactly what our state has been actively preparing for for many weeks. 
I want to, again, assure Marylanders that all levels of government are working together in response to this threat to public health. On Monday, as chairman of the National Governors Association, I joined Vice President Pence in the White House Situation Room with 52 of America's governors for a teleconference with top federal officials along with uh, regarding the coordinated federal state response to COVID-19. On Tuesday, we received approval from the CDC for the Maryland State Public Health Laboratory to be able to do our own testing for the coronavirus, giving our state the capability to test quickly for potential cases rather than waiting for the CDC. On Wednesday, at my direction, the Maryland Emergency Management Agency raised its activation level in order to mobilize additional resources, and we submitted emergency legislation which would allow us to transfer up to $50 million from the Rainy Day Fund uh, for costs associated with the state's coronavirus response. Yesterday, our administration submitted a supplemental budget which includes $10 million for emergency coronavirus preparedness funding, and I issued a proclamation declaring a state of emergency in order to further mobilize all available straight, uh, state resources. This morning, the Maryland Senate voted unanimously to pass our emergency legislation, and I expect that the House will also take immediate action. Today, I updated and met with, uh, well, I, up, I updated both Senator Ben Cardin and Senator Chris Van Hollen, and I met with uh, House Speaker Adrian Jones and Senate President Bill Ferguson. And I want to thank all of them for their support and cooperation. Uh, and our state, uh, uh, as we continue to respond to this rapidly evolving situation, um, today under my authority, during this state of emergency, I am directing the Maryland Insurance Commissioner to require all state health insurers to waive any cost sharing, co-payments, co-insurance, or deductibles associated with testing for the coronavirus. We are also removing all prior authorization requirements by any health carrier for COVID-19 testing that are related to medical necessity. It is critical that anyone who is experiencing symptoms and meets the criteria for testing is able to do so right away and without having any concerns whatsoever about the costs associated with it. Um, now I've got some good news to report. Uh, we've received today the results of seven tests back tonight. All of them came back negative including the three Jewish school students who were tested uh, after having indirect contact uh, with the person in New York who had tested positive for the coronavirus. Um, as of tonight, there are 374 people in Maryland who are currently being monitored by our state health department for indirect contact with people, but these are folks that have not met the criteria and are not showing symptoms. To date, 44 people in Maryland have met the criteria and been tested. Uh, uh, 33 total tests have come back negative. Three tests have come back positive. Eight of them are still pending. And uh, the CDC, as you know, earlier this week expanded the criteria for testing. And so uh, we now have that capability to test at our laboratory in Baltimore, which we can now do within about 24 hours rather than waiting for a much longer period of time. Uh, with the expanded um, criteria and with this rapidly changing situation, we should expect that the number of people being tested will continue to increase and we'll be changing those numbers on a daily basis. But I want to continue to assure Marylanders that our state is taking every precaution when it comes to the coronavirus. And our highest priority is keeping our residents safe. I would again encourage the citizens of Maryland to remain calm, but to also take this seriously 
and to continue to stay informed. We'd also encourage you to uh, visit health.maryland.gov slash coronavirus or to call 211 to connect with a helpline representative if you would like to get any information, you have any questions, or you want to connect with community resources regarding coronavirus. And we will continue uh, to update the public and provide uh, as much transparency and as much information as we possibly can as this situation continues to develop. Um, with that, um, uh, we have Fran Phillips, our Deputy Se uh, Secretary of Health with us, and Lieutenant Governor, our Secretary of Health, and our uh, Head of uh, Maryland Emergency Management Agency with us. I'd be happy to take a few questions from the media, if anybody has any. I'm not sure we can share a lot of that information. Um, we're, we're having difficulty getting all of that detail from the CDC. I can just tell you the information we just got today, this is a breaking. You know, the World Health Organization just made these announcements today uh, about uh, the fact that they've got uh, what I believe are 12 uh, people that either passengers and or people that work for the cruise line. Uh, who've been tested. We believe that w w it appears as if there are six cases in Texas that are related, uh, but we don't have a whole lot more detail, uh, and we're, we're aggressively trying to find out more information, but we've shared about all the information that we have at this time. Governor, you've been absorbing an awful lot of information and test results. After these days, it's Friday evening. How do you feel about where Maryland is with regard to this? Is your level of anxiety increased, decreased, or well, it's a great question. Um, I couldn't be more um, pleased with the team that we have and the preparedness that they've done and where we are with respect to our response. Um, I couldn't be happier about the level of cooperation that we have, uh, not only with our, uh, our, our legislator leaders here in Annapolis, with our local and state um, health department folks working together, our county leaders, and with the federal government, uh, with the CDC, with the White House, with our leaders from Congress. Everybody's on the same page and working together. And I think we have they're all responding um, in a pretty uh, in incredible way. Uh, but, you know, we're concerned. And obviously, the, it's changing constantly. So, uh, to, you know, to, to, I wouldn't say uh, we're, we're obviously concerned. We're not getting a lot of sleep. Um, the information is coming at us pretty fast and, and furious, but I'm really proud of the team that's all working together, and I can promise you that uh, people are doing everything they possibly can to keep uh, Marylanders and the rest of the people in the country safe. This is kind of a, a, a tough one. So, um, Chancellor Perman put out a letter this afternoon to the University of Maryland community um, to reduce large gatherings, um, make preparations to go to an online environment. Big basketball game Sunday on campus at University of Maryland. Hopkins, they're having no fan games. What, are people, what should people do? Whoever... Yeah, I think uh, at this point, um, you know, there are different universities making different decisions, different colleges and different communities making decisions based on a particular set of facts. Um, we don't think there's, uh, in general, a reason for canceling um, large uh, events unless there's a particular set of circumstances. I think, uh, I think Hopkins made a decision on their own that wasn't involving us regarding uh, the team that they were playing and someone that they thought uh, was of a particular risk. That was their decision to make. Um, at this point in time, I think the University of Maryland made their, their own decision, which I think was probably the correct one, to not uh, have the same decision uh, for their basketball game. Uh, Governor, uh, in a lot of states across this country, you know, we're not testing, and you, you've got that green light to go ahead with testing. Should the state begin to say, look, we, we have capacity, we'll take some of that testing load off of you, or are you just satisfied with where we are? Well, that's a great question. And look, we're, um, we'd be more than willing to try to help anybody we can. But I believe that the CDC, there are other states, I think, that are getting, trying, attempting to get approval, and others are. The CDC is ramping up as well. And we're not the only ones, I think, that are doing this. But uh, we're, 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 we're trying to respond to the cases we have, which are, you know, starting to stack up. And I'm, you know, I'm pushing to try to get those results in our state. But if we can, we're, we're all in this together. I can tell you we had, all, we had 52 governors all talking to each other about 
what's happening in each of the states and how can we help each other. So whatever we can do, to, I'm, I'm sure we'll be there to support uh, the other states as well and, and to work together with the CDC. So I may, may, maybe I'll let uh, Fran Phillips address that detail. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Governor. Um, with regard to the kits available in the public health lab, we have over 1,000 kits at this point. We expect another shipment from CDC on Monday. Um, and further, I think it's important to, to realize that effective today, one of the largest commercial national laboratories has received approval to start this testing in their labs. Monday, the other large um, national uh, laboratory chain will begin that. So that's a real breakthrough because it will allow people to get testing without stacking up that uh, in that in, in the, the volume that's coming to the state public health lab, but there'll be lots of alternatives um, come early next week. Well, they, um, I'm sure that they are concerned and we're in direct contact with the folks that, that have been affected. The, the, the community itself is talking with them, the health department, both the local health department and the state health department are talking with those folks that have been impacted. Um, but yes, elderly, the elderly population are more impacted than, than others. Uh, you just heard the, uh, some of you may have seen the, the press conference right before I walked out here. The vice president was talking about a lot of uh, people in their 70s and 80s on the cruise ship uh, off the coast of California. Um, but but uh, it, it is a concern. We had the situation in the state of Washington in, in, a, um, in a retirement, a nursing home facility. Um, look, it's, it's a concern for us in any community, but uh, there, there's no question that uh, uh, older Americans and folks that have uh, compromised uh, health uh, situations are, are more vulnerable than others, and, and uh, we, we, we are, we're going to continue to try to do everything we can to keep them safe and to, to communicate with their the loved ones that are concerned. Governor, are any of the pending tests from patients who had contact with the three confirmed? That's a good question. Okay. Um, that's a good question, and the, um, the individuals that we've identified through contact tracing who have had that kind of direct contact all will be tested, and um, it's really a question of timing when they get to the resource, whether that's a doctor's office or more likely the emergency room, get that specimen or those two specimens, their swabs, and get those two specimens collected, then they need to be shipped to our lab. So it's a process, but every one of those individuals has been contacted and will be tested. Uh, the, the investigation is still underway, and we know of uh, we know of five household contacts, family members, I shouldn't say household contacts, but family members of the three individuals who will be advised to be tested. Um, there may be some other individuals um, whose, whose encounters and whose closeness of contact would warrant that kind of recommendation for testing. Um, all of that testing will be pri prioritized through our state lab. Sure. Um, uh, we've been in very close contact with this particular uh, retirement community and have uh, tremendous cooperation from them at this point. We have also advised them, repeated the, uh, the general guidance as well as the specific regulations having to do with all of their operations and infection control. The, the facility there has, um, has a workforce, a staff that they're going to be looking after and monitoring to make sure that those health care workers do not develop symptoms. They also are very cooperative in making sure that their residents, the residents who may have been exposed only at that one gathering, that one day, that one gathering, if those residents have any symptoms. And likewise, this afternoon, we have put out a message to the community members who were at that gathering to go ahead and to monitor themselves or contact the, uh, the information, the, the number through the Maryland uh, Emergency Management Association. So really that facility has stepped up to, on behalf of their residents and their staff. Monitoring, but no one's under required no, at this point. And we're watching for symptoms uh, for all three of those categories. That would be the community people, the residents themselves, or the staff. The, um, the facility is committed to doing temperature checks on the staff for every shift, so people that co are coming in, even without symptoms, all that staff will be checked, and of course the residents themselves will be routinely monitored. Question, Thank you. Please. Has anyone there at, at the village been uh, tested or at the Bucks County 
school then so we can't speak about Bucks County School, that's uh, the Pennsylvania, and I know that Pennsylvania health authorities are um, managing that situation. At this point, there's no one that has met the criteria or met the contact investigation findings that would warrant testing in that facility. Thank okay. you. Thank you.